Well, I just did a lap around the room to get my heart rate up to the highest that it possibly could go. Well, maybe not the highest, but I was breathing pretty good there. And today in this video, I wanna talk about how air, which includes oxygen, gets down to the level of your lungs. It's a long process, but it's a good process to know as an anatomy professional. Let's begin. All right, we're actually gonna use a ton of different models. I might be setting a record for how many models I use in one video. This is maybe the most right here, but I'm not gonna focus on all the anatomy in each of these models. There's a different video if you want to see each of these models broken down into the anatomy, but I'm just focused on the breathing, how to get air into the lungs. Well, if I start here on what we call the sagittal head model, this is coronal over here, this is sagittal cut. What I can see is there's actually two pathways to get into the back of the throat. And you can go through the nose or you can go through the mouth. So I call this the nose root, the mouth root. And the nose root is we first go through the external nares. These are your nostrils I'm talking about right here. Once you're in the external nares, you're in the nasal cavity, but you might go through what's called a, a meatus. Meatus would be the passageway between the nasal concha. Concha are these bumps right here. So you're going through the meatuses and you get back here and these are your external nares, or sorry, the internal, not external. That's out here, Professor Klein. Down in here are called your internal nares, where all these concha come together. Right in this space as well is something called the nasal pharynx. Nasal pharynx. And then as you get down here, you get down to the oral pharynx. Oral pharynx. And this is where the pathways combine. Because that was the nose route. The mouth route is through the lips, through the teeth. If your mouth is open, and just go in between your teeth into the oral cavity on top of your tongue and back to the oral pharynx. So once we get to the oral pharynx right here, the pathway is gonna be the same from here on out. What's the next step? Well, we have the laryngeal pharynx, which is this extra space here that the epiglottis, which is this blue part, could cover. And then we get into something called the larynx. So back here is the esophagus. We do not want air going down the esophagus. That's for food and drink only. Air, we want going down this more anterior structure, which is the larynx. The larynx will lead into the trachea. But this is where the model stops. So what we have to do is bring in another model and I'll turn it to the side here and put it over here and try to line it up just how it is. Now, obviously this one on the left is a lot larger than the right. This is not life-size, but this is about life-size over here. But what are we looking at? Well, notice this bone right here. You guys see that bone? I'll zoom in. That's the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone would be this bone up here, hyoid. There's a muscle here called the thyrohyoid muscle. There's also a ligament in there as well that leads to the thyroid cartilage, this part here. The thyroid cartilage would be this big blue piece of cartilage. We're talking hyaline cartilage. What's this other blue part? Well, it's another type of cartilage called the cricoid cartilage. It's the same type, hyaline, but it's got a different name, cricoid cartilage. That's in there. And then the trachea begins. So where this model cuts off, right about here where the probe is, would be right about here with the probe. So they line up almost about even. Here, let me take the probe over a little bit more. That's where that model is cutting off. And we can actually see a couple things with the trachea. It's got these tracheal rings. The rings are cartilage. And if I pull this up top here and we take a better look at it, 
we can see these rings wrapping around but they do not wrap all the way around posteriorly there's no cartilage right here because again that's where the esophagus is which sometimes pushes into the trachea now these other things are called tracheal membranes or tracheal ligaments either one works and they're in between they're softer than the cartilages or the rings and that's really the trachea as it travels down but this model doesn't show it all because if we come up here to this model now we can see the trachea going all the way down to where it splits and this is an amazing model because it shows all these different divisions of what we call bronchi and bronchioles the first split in here would be called the primary bronchi going left going right do notice that the right one is more vertical see how it's more vertically in line with the trachea versus the left one kind of juts out there's more obstructions that occur on the right side than the left side because it's a whole lot easier to go down vertically on the right so make a note of that also make a note of two structures where this splits is called the tracheal bifurcation tracheal bifurcation right where my probe is but that's only if it's external if i were to go inside the trachea and look at the same split it'd be called the carina the carina so carina is internal tracheal bifurcation is external make a note of that all right, as we zoom out, we can see the left and the right lung here. Quiz for you. Which lung is bigger, the left or the right? It's actually the right lung is bigger. So you can see it up here. They kind of look about the same, but if you notice, there's this notch here, notch in there that the heart would sit in the left so the left has a little chunk taken out of it so that the heart can sit in there and with the lungs what i did here was i took off this side and you can see inside what i did over here was i took off the left side so you could see inside and the lungs are going to come down and sit on top of the diaphragm the heart's in the middle i can also pull the heart out and now we can see the trachea, which still would be anterior to the esophagus. Here's a great look at the esophagus back here, trachea, heart and blood vessels. We can see that tracheal bifurcation and then the primary bronchi right and left splitting into the secondary bronchi. Now at this point, we see a lot of blood vessels. Blue means veins, red means arteries. These are the divisions of the bronchi at the level of the lungs. So here you can see it splitting and splitting and splitting. I don't think any model really shows this that well. So I'm going to put a picture on the screen of the proper split of the bronchi and the bronchioles. Bronchi, there's three of them, primary, secondary, tertiary. Then we go into the bronchioles, which are even smaller, and we have conducting bronchioles, which split into terminal bronchioles which split into the respiratory bronchioles. And we can actually see those over here. Oh, wait. Professor Klein, how do you remember this stuff? Well, primary, secondary, tertiary makes sense for the bronchus, right, or the bronchi. That's one, two, three. But how about conducting terminal and respiratory? Well, the way I think about it is kind of like if you're driving a car to the airport when you're driving your car which starts with a c 
that's the conducting bronchioles. You gotta drive your car to the airport first. So think conducting first. Then when you get to the airport, what do you do? You've got to find your terminal. So that actually is the word terminal bronchioles. That's the second one. Then it's frustrating when you're not on the plane, but once you get onto the plane, you gave your ticket, you're guaranteed a seat, you can breathe and respirate, which is the last part, respiration. Very relaxing once you're on the plane, but it's tough before then, right? So those are my ways of remembering conducting, terminal, and respiratory bronchioles. All right, so use that if you wanna use it. But once we get past the bronchi and the bronchioles, we got to come over to this model here and let me jump on up so you can see it. And oftentimes you'll see this labeled different ways, but the way it's most commonly labeled is that this is a bronchi. You could say this is a tertiary bronchi as it would split into bronchioles. You'll see some smaller, some bigger. I just call this a bronchus and these bronchioles. Now, why do I do that? Well, bronchi actually have a lot of cartilage surrounding them. This is cartilage right here. And that's because with the bronchi, you want that bronchi deep down in here and the trachea to hold its shape. That's what cartilage is gonna do. It's gonna hold the shape of the trachea and the bronchi. But down in the bronchioles, Notice these salmon colored lines. Salmon colored lines are smooth muscle. This is where you're gonna have bronchodilation when you breathe real deep and bronchoconstriction when you don't really need to breathe that much. So when I just did a lap or two around the room, my bronchioles will bronchodilate because there's smooth muscle there. And when I come back to rest, they'll bronchoconstrict because I don't need to breathe as much. And it's all about the diameter of those areas. But back in here, where are we going? Keep this going, Professor Klein. There's other videos for other things, but let's keep going we get down to what's called an alveolar sac. Notice all these bubbles. Sometimes I refer to them as mini marshmallows, but these bubbles, each bubble is an alveolus. Plural of alveolus is alveoli. So you take a bunch of alveoli and that's an alveolar sac. It's like a sack of potatoes, right? So in that, you have the alveolar ducts. And these alveolar ducts are gonna be the main way air gets down and it spreads out to the alveoli. But we have one more model to go, so let me take a chunk of this model and blow it on up, and now we have the alveolar model. We've got one alveolus, another alveolus. If I flip it to this side, you can see about two, three, three, maybe four alveoli total and air would be coming in down into here and this is the last place it would go and it actually has these holes if i look at it from the other side too these holes that better distribute air once they're in the alveoli so these are called the alveolar pores here's one alveolar pore within the alveoli now if you notice, alveoli are one cell thick. You got one cell up here making the alveoli. Then what happens is that these capillaries, and let me show the top of this model, these capillaries are pressed up against the alveoli, and that's where you have the gas exchange. My probe is showing gas exchange between the alveoli, where the air would be, and the capillary right here. Now the capillary would go out to the venule. This is a venule. The venule would go up here. It's a vein at this point, a pulmonary vein because it's traveling back to the heart. 
and into the heart from the lungs. I got another video on the whole blood flow and how blood gets to the lungs and back from there. Check that one out. But this was the video on the air pathway from the nose or the mouth down through the larynx over to the lungs and the trachea splitting into the bronchi bronchioles alveolar sac and eventually the alveolar model all right hopefully this helped with this pathway i think it's really important to know anatomy in terms of the physiology you could memorize everything i just taught you in a random order but that would be so tough and in my opinion not very fun so if you remember all the anatomy as you track air through those different locations then one you learn the anatomy but two you learn the physiology or at least a little bit of the physiology of how air is transported from out here to the deepest part of your lungs and this has been the video on Air Pathway. I'm Professor Klein from Ohio University in the Human Anatomy Lab. Thanks for watching.